Good morning, everybody. We have with us again, Judge Andrew Napolitano, a man that knows the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, writes about it, talks about it, and really discusses what's going on, I guess disgusting what's going on <laughs> with the Bill of Rights and the Constitution and how they keep robbing us of our rights. And Judge, you have a new article coming out tomorrow. It's called Killing the Constitution. And um, you talk about how in East Germany, how they had everybody spying on everybody else. And that's what's really happened in America. In East Germany, before they, the, the wall came down and the uh, commies left. And you said that they, um, you know, they just, you had no right to privacy and there was no freedom of speech. And that's kind of well, that like in America today. It's coming today. The uh, extension of Section 702 of the FISA Act. 702 is the section of it that allows the feds to, to spy on foreign persons in the U.S. and outside the U.S. without search warrants and the Americans with whom they communicate. Not only has that been um, renewed, it's been extended <laughs> in two particularly um, offensive uh, ways. Congress voted down by one vote. It was 212 to 212 in the House, and Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, left the chair to come down and vote and break the tie. What, what was the issue that he voted against? Requiring a search warrant before the FBI can get their hands on what the intelligence community scoops up when they're um, surveilling communications between Americans and foreign persons. So the FBI does not need a search warrant. They just <laughs> cut a hole in the First Amendment and the, in the uh, Fourth Amendment. The statute also requires your cable installer to spy on you by connecting the feds to your cable system. And if he tells you that the feds have asked him to do that and he's done it, he can be prosecuting for prosecuted for revealing it to you. So in one vote, they attacked the warrant requirement of the Fourth Amendment, the right to privacy, and they attacked the freedom of speech in the First Amendment. Each of these reprehensible extensions passed by one vote in the House of Representatives and by one vote in the Senate. It's disgusting. Congress took an oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. I have often thought, you and I have talked about this on air and off, uh, that the intelligence community has dirt on members of Congress and has subtly uh, reminded them of that when it comes time uh, to cast these votes. Who could possibly vote against a warrant requirement when you already took an oath to the Constitution which requires the warrant? Well, yet these people uh, did it. I listened to the debate. This conservative Republican from Ohio, uh, Mike Turner, led the charge uh, in favor of the intelligence community. We have to listen to what Hamas is saying. <laughs> Hamas? Communicating with Americans? Is he crazy? Is Hamas a danger to the United States of America? that we have to suspend the warrant requirement for Americans' right to privacy? It was just uh, farcical. By the way, Thomas uh, Massey and Chip Roy and Andy uh, Biggs, the, the libertarian members of the House that spoke against uh, this uh, extension, they were given five minutes. That was it. Uh, you said, is that guy crazy? Uh it's the cover of the Trends Journal magazine this week. Here it is. Yeah, the inmates are running the asylum. You're right, both asylums, the yep. White House and the Capitol. Yep, they wrote both there. You know, in the same weekend that Congress uh, assaulted our Fourth Amendment rights and assaulted our First Amendment rights, uh, they agreed to borrow $95 billion to give away 61 billion in the name of Ukraine. I say in the name of Ukraine because 40 billion of that stays here. It just goes to the military industrial complex. Uh, the remaining 20 billion uh, is in tranches of uh, ammunition uh, when we have it. We don't even have it yet. And the rest is in cash. That was preceded by the second of two lectures that Bill Burns, the director of the CIA, has given to President Zelensky. Stop the stealing. 
and tell your generals to stop complaining publicly that they're not allowed to steal as much as you are. Can you imagine a conversation uh, like that? That stuff is documented and, uh, and not refuted that Burns had that conversation. Also in that uh, tranche of money, uh, the money to Israel mysteriously went from nine billion up to twenty-six billion. The remaining five billion goes to Taiwan. What are we doing in Taiwan? Well, we have a thousand Marines on Kinmen Island, which is an island off the coast of the mainland uh, China. Could you imagine if the Chinese had a thousand of their troops on Block Island or some island off the coast of? Uh, of Long Island, wouldn't we react violently to that? Well, it's uh, World War Three's begun. Yes, people don't realize it. I was talking to a, 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 a guy, and, and uh, he said, "You know, people. Uh, you know, if, if you only calmed down a bit and weren't so angry, you know, more people would listen to you." I said, "I'm angry." I have a right to be angry when I see the slaughter of innocent people like in Gaza, the genocide, my money. I work very hard to steal my money to give to these people to murder those people. You bet I'm angry. He said, well, you know, he said, I know that things are bad, but there's nothing that I can do. This is a guy like around our age, you know. Great. So I'm just going to live life as happy as I can. I said, great. You do what you want to do. I'll do what I want to do. But save your anger crap for somebody else. I said, I'm doing everything I can. I launched Occupy Peace. I put out a magazine. Like you, we, we both stand up and fight for the rights of this country that our founding fathers fought for. And that all the people in America was the land of opportunity, a place of freedom. And now it's turned into a hellhole. Your article, you keep writing about what's going on over here. And, and you say the, the quintessential American right is the right to be left alone. Screw you. Who the hell are you to say that? Who the hell are you to say that? I'm in charge. I'm the politician in charge. Where is the anger? Where is the outrage? Well, there is outrage on college. There is outrage on college campuses, and the White House uh, is encouraging, and the Republicans in Congress are intimidating college presidents to suppress that anger. The anger is a pro-peace, anti-war anger. But if you do that at Columbia University, you are tarnished as anti-Semitic, and therefore creating an environment that's unsafe for uh, Jewish students, and therefore your uh, free speech rights will be suppressed. Simple as that. Speaking of Jewish students, there was a massive rally that is barely reported, if at all, in the United States, but I read it on The Guardian this morning. Thousands of people protested against little Chucky e. Schumer in front of his house. Jewish people. And three over 300 got arrested. For what? For protesting. <laughs> Little Chucky Schumer. Well, Schumer engineered uh, all the money to Israel and Ukraine and engineered the assaults on the Fourth Amendment and the First Amendment. Even if he hadn't, those people have the right to uh, protest whatever they want. They're locking up people like crazy now. Again, this is, this is an article from uh, the World Socialist website. Biden launches police state crackdown at U.S. universities. The developments over the past week marked a political turning point. The Biden administration, in alliance with his fascist-led Republican Party, has moved to criminalize political opposition to the Gaza genocide, currently centered on campuses through a massive police state mobilization. It's true. I'm sorry, as horrible as it sounds. Uh, it's true. The government uh, can't tolerate uh, dissent, uh, in part because it impairs the president's ability to get uh, reelected. Trump, on the other hand, is silent on all this. Not a peep. He's, he's concerned with uh, hookers telling stories about his, his sexual escapades in a public courtroom under oath. 
uh, rather than uh, what he would do if he were in the White House. Uh, yeah, this the, your article is is so important and and so sad because it's kind of week after week you're writing and giving us the examples of how we've lost our freedom and how the United States, you say the concern about our uh, being spied upon was initially manifest in 1765 when the British government entered colonial homes with warrants issued by secret courts. And you talk about the Stamp Act. And you said the true goal of this forced entries was to search for revolutionary materials in order to help the government predict who might be planning the revolution that came eight, 11 years later. And, um, and history repeats itself. Now we have a secret court in Washington, D.C. called the FISA court that issues these broad general warrants. They don't specifically describe the place to be searched or the thing to be seized as the Fourth Amendment requires. One uh, FISA uh, court judge signed a warrant allowing spying on every customer of Verizon. At the time, that was 115 million customers. You talk about a broad general warrant. This is the broadest, most general warrant in the history of the world, uh, and the court authorized it because the court itself is intimidated by these uh, intelligence community uh, people. Well, you know, you mentioned about how the CIA and the FBI have all this information on these people, and that's why they do what they do, like Mike Johnson. And there's an article that came out about the criminality in his family, his pornography, what, I, you know, a whole bunch of stuff, right? Yes, yes. I'm sure that uh, that was sub Rosa last weekend just to make sure he did the right thing to please his masters in the intelligence community. And from their perspective, he did not from the perspective of the constitution, but from their perspective, they got everything they wanted, except they uh, reduced the length of the extension of this uh, FISA act from five years to two. Oh, big deal. They, right. The Republicans believe Trump will be in office in two years and he'll veto the extension baloney. He condemned the extension five years ago and then he signed it. He condemned the extension this time, and then he praised Mike Johnson for uh, engineering it. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He himself was the victim of this uh, this spying by these very same people and this very same mentality, and he's giving them what they want. And you know why? Because they have dirt you... on him. Yeah. And again, the inmates are running the asylum. Nice. These are crazy, demonic people. Look at Look at what happened when I was just talking about little Chucky Schumer. This is the little clown boy that went out with the big lie, you know, trying to make the American people. Again, look, look at this clown. There he is. Yeah. An arrogant, arrogant, and I call it right to his face, an arrogant piece of shit. Oh. That's all they are. They forgot two words, public servant. No, we're their servants. We're their servants. We do what you tell you. This is the guy that came out and, oh, Netanyahu has to go. He's so bad. Remember that baloney? That's the kind yeah. of crap they put out there right. to make it think that the United States is against the genocide as he's pushing through this bill to get $26 billion of our money to go to what? Israel's like the 33rd richest country in the world. And our money going at $3.8 billion going since the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner, Barack Obama, $3.8 billion of our military money going to the military in Israel every year? Well, get ready, B, because we're about to send you another 26. Now, it's not going to come all at once, and it's not all military, but uh, you're going to get it. <clears throat> He's in bad shape. They've, they've lost in Gaza. They have not degraded. Uh, Hamas. They know they can't uh, defeat Hezbollah, and they know Iran can pierce uh, their most highly protected military facility, which Iran did. So Netanyahu and his uh, right-wing um, uh, cohorts are scrambling. Well, they're scrambling, but here's a headline from Reuters today. Israel steps up strikes across Gaza, orders new evacuation in North. 
Let's go back to when this began on after Hamas attack on October 7th. Everybody from the north leave. Remember that? Oh, right, no, right. Go to the south and you'll be safe there. Yeah. So they did that and now he's about to invade the south. Yep. It's, it's, a, it's a criminal gang. It's an apartheid regime engaged in genocide. It's hard to find words strong enough uh, to condemn the immorality and unlawfulness of the Netanyahu regime. Apartheid regime, what'd you say? Apartheid, An apartheid regime. regime engaged in, in genocide. In genocide, yep. In front of everybody's eyes and our money going to do it. Correct. Where is the outrage? Under the law, we are as culpable as war criminals as they are. You know, I, nobody's going to prosecute Biden because he can't remember what day it is. But Tony Blinken and Jake Sullivan could easily be prosecuted by some future administration for war crimes. Oh, no, because Blinken denies U.S. double standard over alleged Israeli rights abuse. I saw that I played that so-called denial yesterday on my show. It's laughable, utterly laughable. Tell us about it. Well, he's basically uh, saying we have no evidence of uh, genocide. We're looking for it. We're looking for war crimes. We can't find any. If we find the war crimes, uh, we will stop doing business with the war criminals. Right under your nose, Tony. How could you deny your own eyes and ears? The world knows what the Netanyahu regime is doing. Don't raise your voice, Judge. Don't oh, be I angry. Forgot, I forgot your friend is going to come down on me. Your your former friend, whoever he is, is going to come down on me because I was angry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 again, they asked they asked Netanyahu uh, Netanyahu Biden Netanyahu Greenberg Iceberg. What's the difference? They asked Blinken. That's an old joke, Greenberg Iceberg. <laughs> right. But anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they asked Blinken about is there a double standard uh, when applying U.S. law allegations of abuses by the Israeli military in Gaza. And he said, no. He said, he said do we have a double standard? The answer is no. And then he talks himself down into a rabbit hole. Yep. Could you imagine the, but this, this is what I'm saying. It's the arrogance of these people. Yeah. They would never say this to you face to face, man to man. Never. How I, how I wish I could interrogate them under oath. I mean, this guy's lied under oath many times because many of the tranches of weapons that went to Israel were without express explicit authorization by Congress. Under the law, the U.S. can do that. If the Secretary of State certifies in writing and under oath, in writing and under oath, that it's a national security emergency of the United States of America, I would defy Tony Blinken to explain to me how giving all this money to Netanyahu to kill civilians is a national security emergency of the United States. Well, you know, you forget. He went to Dalton. I went to Harvard. My daddy was the ambassador to Hungary. And my uncle was the ambassador to Belgium. You're just a little nothing of a boy from what, Jersey City. Yeah, you don't count. Don't you know who I am? I'm a member of the club. I've been sucking off the public tit my whole life. These are the arrogant people that are running and ruining our lives. Yes. They better be out. Where are the billionaires? Could you imagine if the billionaires were coming out for peace? Could you imagine wow. not a penny for peace in the billionaires? Silence. They must own stock in the uh, military industrial complex and they want this stuff to go on. I, I, I hate to impugn their morality, but th that's got to be it. Judge, I am very concerned. I'm a trend forecaster, you know, and I, I and, and, and this World War Three is is going to continue to escalate. They just made it very clear by the ninety five billion dollars that we sent to Israel, uh, uh, Taiwan and and Ukraine. And Netanyahu knows he's in trouble. 
And you know what I say, when all else fails, they take you to war. He's escalating the wars against Hezbollah he, in Lebanon. He's going to escalate him in Syria and he's going to escalate it in Iran. I will bet anything on it. Well, he, he desperately he, wants a war with Iran with uh, with U.S. backing. Yep. He believes that that will uh, erase the memories of his failures on October 7th and his slaughters of the uh, Gazan uh, people. Uh, and he's created a straw man there. The Iranians don't have a nuclear weapon. Everybody in the nuclear community, no matter which side of the ideological spectrum you're on, just ask Ritter, he'll tell you this. This is his field. Everybody in the nuclear arms community recognizes that Iran does not have a nuclear weapon. Uh, this is all a uh, Emmanuel Goldberg. Do you remember Emmanuel Goldberg? He was the fictional big brother in 1984 that the people would shake their fists at in movie theaters and were told to hate and that the government was waging war against Emmanuel Goldberg. Turned out that he didn't exist. It was just made up uh, by the government. Uh, Iran, as the boogeyman, is made up uh, by uh, Israel uh, so that Bibi can get his domestic policies off the uh, failures off the front page. He's a monster. Yep. And... And how dare Iran want nuclear weapons when Israel has what about between two to four hundred? That they stole the technology for which they stole from the United States. Yeah. Yes. But they're the chosen people. I forgot they can get what they want. <laughs> Says so in the Bible, you know, chapter six, section eight. You know, I don't want to hear this stuff anymore. You know, this is disgusting what's has going Deacon, on. Has Deacon Salenti ever uh, addressed the Old Testament and whether Bibi was chosen by God the Father to slaughter <laughs> Palestinians? This is incredible that they even say this, much less believe it. Uh, judge, if we don't have peace on earth, we're going to have hell on earth. Yes. Uh, people better start doing something. <sighs> and uh, it's going to get worse every day that... The, the, the uh, facts are there. Again, I'm reading the headlines about, uh, here's one that came out. U.S., you ready? Would beat China in a war, Intel official. In a conflict between Washington and Beijing broke out today, the more experienced American force would prevail, but with significant casualties, a U.S. military in touch official has told reporters. An official piece of crap. You haven't won a war since World War II. You couldn't beat the Vietnamese, the Iraqis, the, the Afghans. You're going to beat China with the largest naval force in the world? I'm China, China, gonna China, would prevent us from ever, China would prevent us from ever even reaching Taiwan. Yeah. And going back to um, uh, this, the, the fear that I have is that when Iran struck back at Israel after Israel bombed their consulate in Damascus, Syria, and killed top commanders and several civilians, a dozen or so, when they struck back, I cannot tell you how many people told me about, oh, you know, I was out and all of a sudden my friends started calling me and they said, oh, Iran is attacking Israel. Oh, I was at a party and oh, and all, and they, all the... It was a big deal that Iran attacked Israel. So what I'm saying to you, and you had just said, Netanyahu wants the United States to support its war against Iran. And when they do, the American people will swallow the crap and they'll support it. I'm sorry to say that I think your prediction is true because we always do. We always do. The anti-war side is always the minority, no matter how correct they are morally and historically. Uh, look at uh, look at Vietnam. The anti-war side was mocked, belittled, drafted, arrested. They were right, and the government was wrong. Just like what they're doing now to the students. Correct. How about another Kent State? Oh God! Right. I hope it doesn't come to that. Well, yeah, I, I'm telling you, if we don't stop this, this is serious. I'm, I'm heartbroken. I'm heartbroken. And uh, this this is, it's right in front of everybody's. You look at the pictures of what they're doing in Gaza. You can't believe this stuff. Right. The bombed right. out buildings. Oh, we're getting Hamas. Hamas was living in there. Yeah, they were in the second floor. I mean, who are you talking to over here? 
They just Hamas. uncovered they just uncovered a mass grave of uh, 300, uh, many of which were naked and uh, their hands tied behind their backs and they had been murdered execution style. Yep. Women and children. Yep. We have it in the Trends Journal, unfortunately, this week. We wrote all about it. Uh, <laughs> yep. Biden urged Congress to act on Israel. He says, you ready? Iran's aim is, quote, to destroy Israel forever. That's the, the out of the mouth of bullshit Biden, five draft affirmance, but loved every war since he's been sucking off the public tit for over 60 years. And whose uncle was devoured by cannibals. You heard this lady. <laughs> <laughs> I think they put him on a spit. They, they roast oh, him. Oh, God. This is, uh, I'm telling you, the, the. Can't make in, this up. I know, the inmates are running the insane asylum. It's an insane asylum. <laughs> Congress in the White House in front of everybody's eyes. Yes. Judge, yeah. thanks so much for being on. Uh, you're welcome, Gerald. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for all you do to expose what the government uh, is doing. And thank you um, for what you do. And everybody go to judging freedom. The people that he has on are judging freedom at levels. You will not find anywhere, any place your guests from, you know, Scott Ritter, McGregor, uh, professor Sachs, uh, Giraldi, Giraldi today. Oh, Giraldi today. What time? Three o'clock Eastern. He's okay. Back. See you then. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.